Hi. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Hi. Hi, Lydia. Hi, Robert. Hi, Ellie. Hi, uh, Maribel and Gabriela already. How's everybody? Everybody okay? Yeah, very good. Nice. Hi, Evelyn. All right. Uh, it's raining again. Is it raining by your house? No? Wow, Nidia. Amazing. It's raining here again. Not yet, so, but it looks like it's about... It looks like it's... Yeah, yeah. You know, it wasn't raining five Ooh, minutes. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, it's heavy raining again. All right, guys. So welcome again to another class. We're going to be talking today... A second here. We're going to be talking today about organization questions. This is the third type of questions that we are going to study on the listening section. All right, remember that we're trying to do one type of question per day because there are four types and we have four days. All right, so this is the third type. All right, tomorrow we're going to study the last type of question within the listening section. And then next week we're going to do the speaking section. All right, and then the very last week we're going to do the writing section. Okay, so we are right on track. Okay, so as I said, good evening, Freddie. Uh, welcome. So we have, and Saida also, uh, we have here. Uh, the organization questions. I already sent the PPT and the audios. Did you get them? Did you get the PPT uh, and the audios from the WhatsApp group? Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. Nidia, did you get them? The audios and the the PPT I sent a few minutes ago. Yes, the PPT. Okay, but the audio I I can't because of my my laptop. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So we're going to see like if we can share them here in class. All right. Very good. The rest of you, you guys, were you able to download either the PPT or the audios? Everybody's got them. Yeah. 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 Very good. All right. Okay. So that makes the class uh, go, like work better that way. And I'm sorry, I just sent it to you like not that long ago, but I was in many, many things today. So I was caught up in time, but I send it to you. All right. So, organization question, guys. This is T you already have. I'm going to explain it to you so you understand what's going on. That's not it. And <laughs> that's you guys. Uh, this is it. Okay. So, I'm going to explain to you what this is all about. I don't know if you were able or you have been able to watch the platform itself. It's the same information, there's nothing new. I just tried to explain it a little better, all right, or a little deeper, better said. So we have organization questions. Now, what they ask you to do or what they ask from you is this. They want to show your understanding or how the lecture is structured, okay? I'm sorry, it's very difficult, but it's winter. So it's like, well, it's early winter anyway. So it's kind of like raining very heavy. And where I live, it's always raining. So, <laughs> all right. Um, the, 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 uh, the point of these questions is to see if you understand how the lecture or the conversation is structured, okay? Just like anybody, and like all the other questions. Then we have, I want you to watch, we're gonna watch the video together, and I'm gonna, the same video that we have on the platform, I'm gonna pause it and I'm gonna explain to you, all right? So that's what we're going to do. Just give me a second here so I can have it already open. So, in case you have not watched it, we're going to watch it together. If you already did, that's okay. So, I can explain it and you can understand it better. All right? So, here we have the video. Hi, welcome back. This time, we'll go over organization questions. Organization questions ask you to show understanding of how a lecture is structured. You can recognize organization questions because they often include phrases such as why does the professor mention or 
Why does the professor discuss? These kinds of phrases show that organization questions are often asked about the examples in a lecture. So it helps to listen for examples and think about why the professor is using them. Now let's look at a sample question. All right, if we, if we pause it right here, guys, it's like, it's like this. This is just a sample. It's not, this is not how they look like, but this is like how we can prepare for these questions, okay? So for example, in this, in this example, we're not gonna listen to it. I'm gonna read it and it says, you hear, this is on the audio and the man is speaking and says, the snow is a fantastic insulator. Ask the uh, Inuits. However, the extraordinary efficiency of a snow as an insulator to find a person buried in an avalanche, all right? The narrator. Why does the speaker mention the Inuit, all right? Which are like a tribe of people, all right? And then you have to write because the Inuit people would be authorities on snow because they like, they live on snow because they're winter people, okay? And it says right there that you know people live in a snowy climate. Therefore, they would know a lot about the properties of snow, okay? So the, what they do is they want to see if you actually understand what's going on, all right? So that's why I have today, I have four samples, and that's one of the listenings I sent to you, of that you're going to listen to something, and I want you to write something down, all right? What you think they are talking about this, okay? Then let's go on here. Here's a listening tip that can help you understand how a lecture is organized. Listen for signal words that indicate that introduction, mere ideas, examples, and the conclusion or summary. These might be sequence words like first, next, and then. Or they might indicate time or chronology like before, during, or since. As we go on the PPT, I'm going to explain this a little bit better, all right, or a little deeper. Or they could show cause and effect like accordingly or as a result. These signal words are good cues for when to take notes. Skill building tips. Listen for signal words. Introduction, major ideas, examples, conclusion. First, next, then, second, finally after, at last, before, during, now, since, obviously, of course, accordingly, as a result, because, for example, for instance, in conclusion, to summarize. Now, within the lectures, sometimes you're gonna find these words, specifically these words, but not always, okay? That would be like giving you the answer way too fast, okay? But if you find them, that's going to make it easier for you to first understand the type of questions where you're, you guys are being asked to, all right, and what to look for on those cases. All right, okay. Now, here we go. Let's continue with our presentation here. Seven, 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 eight, six. Hold on, just give me a second. Just give me one second, guys. I need to fix something. Just give me one second. All right, so here we go. So this is the presentation. So we already watched the video here. Now, they say on the video, it says that what we need to do or what they look for on us is to see if we understand, okay? Now, how can we understand this? It says how to understand the organization question. And this is going to help you to understand how or what to look for or how to answer them. They are classified on three, let's say, three big, three common ways a passage 
capacity for business. Okay, so we're going to look at three ways. One way, it talks about classification. The other one, it talks about process. The other one talks about chronology. Again, I'm not saying that these are the only three uh, types or ways that a facet is organized. I'm saying these are the three common ways, okay? That's why on the platform, on the video, they talk about sequence words. They talk about next, after, all right? So that's why, because they have categorized them on this, on three, the most three common ways, but there are more, okay? So we're going to study the classification first. Let's see, classification, Nidia, can you read that for us, please? Classification. Is where types of, uh, excuse me. Uh, is where types of things, do you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you clearly. Nidia, now I can't because your, your mic is off. You were, I was listening to you before. Okay. There you go. Classification is where types of things with similar characteristics are put into groups. Excellent, all right. So classification is where types of things with similar characteristics are put into groups. I'm gonna show you an example. Robert, thank you, Nidia. Can you read number two, Robert? Process. Robert? Process. Thank it's you. where a series of steps are described and. Okay, very good. The process, next, after that, very good, is where a series of steps are described. And the last one, chronology, everything is. <laughs> Evelyn, can you read it, please? All right, um, Freddy, can you read it for me? Okay, chronology is where a series of, series of events, events? Are described, events are described in order of time. If you can quickly understand the organization of the passage, it can help your comprehension. Very good, all right. As I said, guys, there are more uh, ways of describing or talking about organization questions, but these three are the most common ones. Classification, where you have to see if, like similar things are put together with similar characteristics are put together in groups that will help you understand the uh, organization question. Or if you see a process going on here, if you identify a series of steps, all right, that are being described, or in passage, they talk about chronology, all right? And as Freddie was saying, it's a series of events that are described in order of time, okay? So those three, remembering those three things will help you a lot on the organization questions. I'm gonna show you, a, well, before we show you, I want, I, I want you to read this here. Eli Gaius, can you read this for me? Okay. Usually clues, clues. the organization will come in the first sentence, but not always. Uh -huh. They will, however, come very near the beginning. At the beginning, thank you so much. Now, this is very important for you to know. This is a clue, but it's not telling you that, I mean, it's not telling, telling you that it's always like this. It's telling you that sometimes it's like that, not always. Usually clues, for example, about, about chronology, about the process, or about the classification is going to be at the very beginning, but not always, okay? So if you don't look for it at the, I mean, if you cannot find it at the very beginning, don't panic, okay? It's not written on stone. It says, uh, usually clues of the organization will come in the first sentence, but not always. However, they will come very near of like to the beginning, all right? So it's always around the first paragraph, let's say, okay? So here we have example number one. This is an example of classification. Saida, can you read this, please? The natives people of Greenland and Canada's northern regions traditionally often live in a type of a snub house, known as an igloo. 
there were two types of igloo, all of different size and all used for different purposes. The smallest of the igloos was constructed as, as a temporary shelter. Hunters, while all hunters, while out on the land or sea ice come come ah. in one of these igloos for one or two nights. Next, inside was the semi-permanent intermediate size family dwelling. dwelling. This usually was a single room, well in that a small area, which formed a king of village. Largest of the igloo was a temporary temporary building constructed for special occasions. This was constructed either by en enlarging a smaller igloo or build a building for a scratch. This school had up to five rooms and housed up to 20 people. A large igloo may have been constructed for several smaller igloos attached by their tunnels, giving a common tunnels, giving a common access to the outside. These were used to hold community feel and traditional dams. All right, thank you very much, Laida. All right, if you notice, we're talking here, what are we talking about in this paragraph? Guys, what is it the talking types about? Of igloos. Yes, they're describing about igloos, right? Now, if you notice, they're classifying them. Three types, the smallest, next in size, the largest. They're using comparatives, they're using superlatives because they are talking or relating the igloos, all right, and they're classifying them, all right. Continue reading. Um, Evelyn, just the bottom part, notice. Notice how quite, quite near the beginning in sentence, in sentence two, we get the main idea of the passage. The organization is classification in three types of igloos. Also, notice how the writer moves from the description of the one type of igloo to another. Right, so if you, thank you, uh, Evelyn. If you go back to the passage, the native peoples of Greenland and Canada's northern regions traditionally often lived in a type of snow house known as an igloo. There were three types, all right, and they, they, are, they classify them, all right? So if, you're, if you notice, it's like at the very, very beginning of the whole paragraph, okay? I know that right now you're reading. In this case, we're, we're supposed to be listening, all right? But this is just for you to see how they are structured, all right? Do you have any questions about this type of uh, question? Referring to classification question, or we're okay? Do you understand yeah. why is that classification? Yes. Yeah. In this, in the huh? of question teacher, uh, is only classified the the similar things that can hurt. Right. Yes. So remember that because we're talking about classification, you have to keep this in mind that they are uh, types of things with similar characteristics, and in this case. In this paragraph, we were talking about igloos, because they have similar characteristics. Maybe they are smaller, the other ones are larger, but at the end of the day, in the same, I mean, they, they share similar things among each other. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yes, yeah? very good. All right, very good. Let's go on here. Example. Who wants to read example two? Guillermo, Gabriela, Robert, who wants to read that one, please? Nobody today. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, she, okay. Mm -hmm. Let me go ahead and read it for you. <laughs> okay. okay. Example two. Go ahead. Chronology. Yes. Uh, the patron saint of England is St. George. George was born to a Christian family during the late third century. His father was from Cappadocia and served as an officer of the Roman army. George followed his father's example 
by joining the army soon after coming of age. He proved to be a good soldier and consequently rose to become consequently uh, rose to become a high ranking officer. Officer, uh, but, but there is an F missing over there. Officer, in 303, 303, uh, Diocletian, the Roman emperor, ordered the systematic persecution of Christians across the empire. Across the empire. George was ordered to take part in the persecution, but instead confessed to being a Christian himself and criticized, criticized. criticized the emperor's decision. The emperor was enraged and ordered George's execution. Christians at the time regarded George as a martyr, yeah, as a martyr and he became widely accepted. Uh, sorry, he became widely accepted as a saint. Right. Okay. So, in this case, on the second line, we notice his chronology. All right. Since the moment they tell you George was born, all right, this you're gonna think, okay, this is not really anything else, but they're gonna be talking about time. All right about chronology, before, after, and all that, right? So in this case, they tell you about years and everything. Let's see, uh, Maribel, can you read the bottom part, the organization? The organization, here is chronology, a series of steps in order of time. Notice the progression of George's life from his birth to his death. That's right, okay? So in this, thank you, Maribel, in this example, they begin talking about George since the moment he was born. And through the passage, they go over his whole life, all right? All the way yeah. to the way when he, uh, when he, when he dies, all right? Or when he gets yeah. killed in this way, all right? So if you notice, they talk about an order of time. They talk about chronology. You understand? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you understand? Yes. All right, very good. Okay. Again, it's easier sometimes when we see it than when we listen to it. Okay. It gets harder when we have to listen and not see what they are I mean, saying. Oh my goodness, the light might go off here in my house. I'm sorry. Uh oh. No. Hi guys, are you there? Hola. Hi. Hello. Hi, hi, hi. Hi. Hi, hi. Guys, can you hi, hear hi, me? Hi. Yes. Yes. Yes? All right. Yes. Sorry. I was a block out here in my house, so that's why my I got disconnected. I'm sorry. Okay, so uh, we were reading, we were finishing reading the chronology one, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, do you have questions about this one, or is like, is it understandable? Yeah. Is that okay? Ready? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Here then, example three, the process. Gabriela, can you start reading, please? Process. Where, sorry? Process, can you see it? Where says example three? Yes. Yeah. yes. Thank you. The cultivation of rice of the great importance of humanity with more than half of the world's population depending on this part, plant. Growing rice is fairly simple but in mechanical equipment is not available. Available? available. It, it is a very labor intensive business. Before rice can be planted, the ground 
on the which ground. it is to be grown most to level and the files so if the land is hilly then the rest have have to be cut into the high side. Hillside. The files of terrain the field? are the fields of terrain Terraces? Terraces are then floated. Flooded. Next, the, floated. Next, the right sleeting, sleeting? which uh -huh. are grown in a separate bed, are transplanted into the floated fields. 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 Yes. Later, when the right start to repel, the files are graining. Finally, then the rice turns yellow. It is already is ready to be harvested. Harvested. All right. Very good. So if you notice, we're talking about a process. Why? Let's see. Um, Guillermo, can you read the the uh, red part, please? Guillermo. Uh, uh, hello, teacher. Excuse me. Can you repeat? Yes. Guillermo, can you read the, the, part, the red part of the example three? The organization here is a process. Can you see my uh, screen, Guillermo? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, the organization here is a process. A series of steps. Steps. Uh, okay. Uh, describing how rice is grown. Uh, notice the notice, notice. Notice uh, the first sentence tells us that uh, rice okay. is very important. Very important. Uh -huh. Very important. Wow. Uh, uh, this is not. This is yeah. Uh, my idea of idea the idea of the passage, passage uh, is, passage is about the our intensive process of growing rice. Yeah. Uh, notice. Notice. Uh, notice. Uh, uh, sorry. And notice the words that mark the progression uh, from one step uh, to another. Excellent. Thank you, Guillermo. From one step to another. So here, as you notice, we're talking about the fifth line pretty much. At the very, well, yeah, at the very end of the fourth line, we start talking about before. And then if you go on reading, it says next, then later finally so of course that's a process okay so now the idea behind this guys is for you to realize like uh, words that they are being used or that they are used in the paragraphs in this case it's written that we're reading them but this the same thing would happen if you were listening to them all right so you need to of course pay attention when you're listening to ident to like for you to be able to identify these Keywords, all right, for you to understand. Okay, do you have any questions? Again, like at the very, like if you notice and if you pay attention to all the three um, examples on the classification, it pretty much we, we realize it's a classification type of question because on the third line, they talk about three types. Chronology on the, uh, they're pretty much at the first, at the very end of the first sentence. Uh, if they talk about was born so we know that they're going to be talking about a life of someone and it takes us through the whole process of his life of like the whole time of his life and then the process we find these words all right so they are key words for you to like be looking for okay and then of course you would have to listen to that real question the pro i mean the audio program would ask from you to do okay and this is what we're going to do right now we remember that you need to listen for examples, all right? Sometimes the examples are not so clear. You need to be careful when you read. As I said yesterday, if you are able to, like if you're multitask, 
and you can be listening and writing at the same time, that would help you a lot. But if you don't have that skill, I mean, it's really hard for you to take notes while you're listening, all right? But if you're able to do it, go right ahead. That would help you, okay? Once you pay attention to the words, and if, for example, you say, oh, they said first and they said next, then kind of like pay attention because probably the question is going to be around that, around those uh, set the listening, all right? But again, the listenings are three minutes, four minutes. By the time it finishes, I mean, probably you forgot some things, okay? All right, so here we have, there's some, these are the phrases that are commonly used for these type of questions. Why does the professor mention or why does the professor discuss, all right? And if, of course, they finish the question, all right? So if you're taking the TOEFL test and you, uh, you find these phrases, then most likely this is uh, a type of organization question, all right? So they begin with why instead of what. All right, so why does the professor mention something, all right? Why does the professor discuss about whatever, and then it finishes, all right? Of course, that's gonna happen at the very end of your listening, not before it, okay? First, you're gonna listen to the whole thing, and then this, this phrase is gonna come up, or this question is gonna come up, and you have to answer, all right? So that's why it's a challenge, because you have to listen first to everything, and then pay attention to the type of question they are like asking from you. And then you have to see the choices. Now, this is what I want you to do. I'm gonna send you to your groups right now. The audios are on the PPT, but if not, these are the, uh, this is what we wanna work on right now. You have four listenings for, this is like, let's say this is the first exercise. On the first exercise, you have four listenings, okay? They talk about it and then there is a question there. And then you have to write together, for example, if Emilia and Freddy are working together, kind of come up like, okay, what are they talking about here? Similar to this example here. I mean, sorry, to the one that is on the platform about the Inuit. Why the Inuit people? Why does the professor mention the Inuit people on his lecture, all right? So you have to be paying attention and then kind of write for number one, three, number four. Of course, my answers are not gonna be exactly as yours, all right? But it pretty much would have like the same idea, all right? Maybe the wording is not exact, but the idea you have it, all right? So this is what I want you to do first. When you finish this one, we're going to work on this one. That one has the listening already, and it's a listening about two and a half minutes or 250. Uh, and then you have the uh, question over there, and then you have the four choices, all right? So where, if you got the, if you were able to download the uh, audios for the first exercise, is the, the audio that is called organization question, all right? The second audio is for the last question. You understand? Yeah? All right, so I'm gonna send you right now I'm gonna send you right now to your groups. You may either open up the presentation or just kind of work on the listening and kind of like write what's number one, what's number two, and write what is, why are they mentioning that? Why were they discussing that? And try to write your own ideas. When we come back, we can, we can check, okay? So here we go. You may start clicking on your group, so you may start working.
Boston. These toys are just one example of how high technology has affected childhood experience. Classroom and escort you to your bus, car, or dormitory. At this point, I'd like to introduce Mr. Lang, who's going to demonstrate some ways to protect yourselves through body language, as well as the best ways to conduct yourselves if, if you are confronted. He will also teach you some techniques to break someone's hold on you if it should become necessary. So I'd like you to welcome Mr. Lang. You're getting the talk. Hello, Guillermo. The program continues on the next CD. Exercise L20. Uh, hello. Um, uh, can you understand? I understand. Hi, Emeline. Hi, uh, Maribel. Finished? Um, when, so, so, we, uh, no, teacher. <laughs> so, we don't understand the, 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 the question why the professor pain something like this, uh, Seth. Well, which one are you working on right now, Maribel? For exercise one or exercise two? One the, uh, is about detective. Hero, something like that, like, like oh, cream, about, uh, cream. Sergeant Cuff. Uh huh. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So the question is, I'm gonna read the question, but it's on the PowerPoint. Why does the professor mention a smeared bit of paint in a doorway in the moonstone? So I don't understand. <laughs> the question, Maribel. The question is right here on the presentation. Can you see okay. it? Uh. Wait, that the professor mentioned a paint, a smear, a smear bit of paint in a doorway in the moonstone. Moonstone is a place. Uh -huh, uh -huh. All right. Uh -huh. So why does the professor mention a smear bit of paint, like a little bit of paint, in a doorway uh -huh. in the moonstone? Then you have this, the four choices to describe a mistake the surgeon cuff has made to show how realistically the author describes the crime scene to exemplify a pattern repeated in many detective stories or to illustrate the superior techniques used by the police. Yeah, so so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, very, very good, my No, so I think we were, we were lost. Okay. Uh -huh, but it's, yeah. oh, congratulations. Thanks. Thank you very much, teacher, because you <laughs> helped us with the, with the PPT. Yeah. All right. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. But, but, but what the meaning of smeared? Smeared is a little bit of paint. 
little bit of pain. Uh -huh. okay. But the doctor mentioned a smear bit of pain in the door. Wait. In the moonstone? No. No. And then, Maribel, I'm going to stop sharing because I want to see another group, okay? Okay, thank you. 3.09. Let me see. Uh, yeah, it's open. It meets Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 o'clock. Do you know if it can be used to, as an undergraduate, um, to meet undergraduate course requirements for art majors? Just a minute. Uh, yes, it fulfills course requirements for both art and home economics majors. Good. I'd like to register for it, please. Why does the woman ask if the course meets the requirements for art majors? Why do you think the woman asked Two. that question? Sound activated toys. Well, I think that it's because at the university, you need some credits. Right, of course. That's in, that's in order to fulfill, I don't know if it can be valid as humanity credits or social credits or something like that. Yeah, you're on the right track, Roberto. Now, what she's asking about which kind of um, mayor is she asking? Is she asking about science? Is she asking about education? Do you remember what kind of credit she was asking if this? Arts. Arts, all right, arts, very good. So she's probably an, I mean, she's probably an art major. That's why she's interested to know if the credit is going to like be valid. good for her if she takes it, if it's gonna be valid, that's right, very good, good. All right. That will be, but that's on the section that we have one, two, three, and four. Am I right? That's right, yes. So if you continue listening to the same one, it's gonna to for number two, for number three, and number four. So the idea is yeah. to listen to it, all right, just like you did, and then kind of listen to the question so you kind of like answer it. Like, why is it being mentioned? Or why are they asking that? Or why are they saying that? Or why are they discussing that? Okay. All right? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Let me go ahead and move forward. Whenever the child talks. So. Hi, Freddy. Hi, Saida. How are you doing? Hi, teacher. Well, we are speaking about the third example. Okay. Well, third exercise, sorry. Uh, well, let's start with the last one. Okay. Okay. I think you all know the reason I'm here. Sadly, well, first, First of all, I want to say I regret that violent crime has reached our campus. And of course, until the perpetrator is caught, all of you need to take extra precautions. I know some of you are frightened, and I don't mean to frighten you anymore. I want to assure you that assault is a very rare occurrence here, and the chances of your becoming a victim are remote. However, as women, we all need to be alert and be cautious here or any other place we go. There are simple procedures we can follow. Um, try not to be out alone at night and never use shortcuts like uh, unlit alleyways or routes across vacant lots. Uh, when you're out, walk facing the traffic so a car can't pull up behind you I know that some of you take night classes. If you don't have anyone to meet you after class, call campus security. They'll send someone to pick you up from your classroom and escort you to your bus, car, or dormitory. At this point, I'd like to introduce Mr. Lang, who's going to demonstrate some ways to protect yourselves through body language, as well as the best ways to conduct yourselves if, if you are confronted. 
He will also teach you some techniques to break someone's hold on you if it should become necessary. So I'd like you to welcome Mr. Lang. Why is the speaker giving the talk at this time? Okay. About the violent crime? Yeah. And also she mentioned how the woman is vulnerable yeah. in this violent situation and mentioned and some advice that some advice? Uh, be alert. To be alert. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. So right. well, I think that in this exercise could be a process. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, because, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. So why does she say this? Is because of the violence that has been going on on the campus of the university, right? So that's pretty much it. Very good. All right. Good job. Very good. What do you have for number one, Saida? What did you get for number one, and Freddy? What was like, um, it says, why is she interested in on knowing about the credit? Why do you think it was? Did you answer number one? Yeah, uh, well, we think it is chronology. Okay. But we are not completely sure. But okay. in, in this exercise, mention a date. Uh huh. Uh, because uh, she is talking about. Uh, her new course and her new schedule. Okay. Yeah, that right. is tricky. Now, why why do you think she's interested to know about all these details? Sorry, what is your question? Yeah, why do you think she is interested to know all these details about that course? Why do you think that? Oh well. I know that she mentioned that uh, she want to graduate. Uh huh. Um, I mentioned economy. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. Saida, do you remember anything else? I don't remember. Maybe the first one is not completely clearly. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And okay. Exercise. I think that is. Uh, it was better. All right. Uh, Very good. <laughs> Okay, yeah. The first one is like she's asking all these questions because she is um, she's studying art, all right. So she wants to major in art. That's why she says, "Is this credit valid for what?" All right, and she goes on, and then he says, "Yeah, let me check." And then he's checking, and then he says, "Yeah." So she registers on the course, all right. So she is probably an art major, all right. Like she's a major, so she's studying. To become that, all right. So that's why she's interested on in that, all right. So that's pretty much that would be like the answer. Again, your answer is not like supposed to be exactly as mine, but it should be around those um, <laughs> thoughts, all right. Very good. Okay, we're gonna go back because I have the other class like right away. So what okay. I'm gonna do? Well, I'm gonna say this to everyone so you guys have the answers like all of you together. Okay. 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 Hi. All right. I don't know if you were able to finish uh, the exercise. What I'm going to do as soon as we, well, not right now because I have the other class right after it, but as soon as I finish the other class, or so like about 10, 10, 15, I'm going to send on our WhatsApp group, I'm going to send the, um, the answers that I have that might not be the same as yours, like, especially for the first exercise, because that one you're supposed to write a reason. So my words may not be the same as yours, but what you need to check if you, are, if you are like along those lines, all right? If you're talking about something different, then you are in trouble. But if you find similarities between your answer and my answer, then you're okay, all right? If you missed the comma, that's okay, all right? Or like the idea is for you the idea in your own words, okay? So just give me a little bit of time late, like when I finish my other class and I'll send the answers, okay? So you can compare. In case you were not able to finish, then you can finish it. It's yours and you have it already, okay? okay. Thank you so much hey, uh, teacher. for being again in another class. And I'm sorry, sometimes it's very noisy because of, of the heavy rain, but I mean, we're here, okay? So thank All you right. so much. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great night.
Have a great night. Bye-bye. Okay. Have a great night.